Hi guys, I'm back with another video. So it is a Disneyland Paris hints and tips video. So I have, let me just have a little check in my trusty note. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I have 16 tips. So some will like go together, um, but most of them are like individual tips, what I think are like the key things that you need when you go to Disneyland Paris. So I'm just going to get comfy. Uh, so the first one is quite an important one. So it is if you are staying in a Disneyland hotel, you get extra magic hour or extra magic time, I think they call it now. So that means you can go into the park an hour before the park officially opens. So that would technically be nine o'clock, but the park um, opens to, they open like the gates at half nine to the general public, which most people don't know. Um, so you can get in the park from half eight. That is if you're staying in the main Disneyland Hotel, Newport Bay, Sequoia Lodge, Hotel New York, or the Marvel one when it opens, Santa Fe, Cheyenne or Davy Crockett Ranch. So that's seven hotels you can stay in <coughs> where you can get this extra hour in the park. So if you go like out of like um, in in term time, sorry, um, then obviously they're going to be a lot quieter because not as many people go. Um, but if you're go in holidays, it's still going to be quiet um, quieter than the main park, like say at twelve o'clock. So in that time you can, there are rides open so, and there's character meets. So in the main park, the rides that are open, to my knowledge, are Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast, um, Peter Pan's Flight, The Carousel, uh, Big Thunder Mountain sometimes opens, it opens like sometimes a little bit earlier than like half nine, but see that's sometimes open, uh, Dumbo, and then I also think that Hyperspace Mountain opens earlier, but it doesn't open right at half eight. Um, but also the Princess Pavilion is open where you can start queuing to go meet princesses. Mickey Mouse's house is open where you can meet Mickey. And then down Main Street, there are like character meets at like their normal points as well. So, but sometimes it's not the normal character what's there. So often Chip and Dale are um, down on Main Street, whereas they're not normally there during the day. Uh, but that is a really good time to use to get on rides and to meet characters in a shorter amount of time. The next one, saying going back to Disneyland hotels, so in all of the hotels, apart from David Crockett Ranch because it's not on on site, um, have a character meet in the hotel reception every morning. This starts at quarter past eight, I believe, and goes through until 11 o'clock so if you're there and like say you've just arrived um to disney like your first day you've gone to check into your hotel like they say you can't check in straight away but um you can go to your hotel because obviously that's where you get your ticket from so you go to your hotel like check in but obviously sometimes they won't give you your room key they'll give you your park tickets and then if you get there before 11 o'clock you can go and queue up and meet like the character in your hotel these are really good because normally they're like the Fab Five, so Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto, those kind of characters. Say so that like top six, because who do I include? Daisy. Daisy's not part of the top five, but yeah. So those kind of characters are all in those ho in the hotels. When the Marvel Hotel opens, which I believe is next March, is it March or is it somewhere? I can't remember. But it opens next year. Um, there's going to be an Avengers character or Marvel character in that, that hotel but I don't know if that is specific that you can only meet them if you stay in that hotel but if you stay in any of the other hotels or even if you stay off site you can go into one of the main hotels and meet a character I went I stayed off site last time I stay went into the Disneyland Hotel up to where Inventions is, in front of the big fireplace, and I met Mickey Mouse within five minutes. So super way to meet characters, they sign autographs, they take photos, they have good interaction with you and everything. So it's really good, and obviously they're not in their usual background setting, 
but their um, Sequoia Lodge has got like a woodlandy um, setting on it and stuff like that. So it is really good and really nice way to meet the characters. They are in their classic outfits as well, so if you were worried about that. Um, but yeah, really quick and easy way to meet characters. And I think sometimes you get a bit more interaction, like they take more photos. Like the photo pass photographer is normally a bit more like, oh yeah, I'll just snap, snap, snap. So, which is really good. Um, the next one is to use the fast pass system. So the fast pass system is free. They do have a pay for one, which I'll explain in a minute. But it's a free fast pass system, which anybody can get with their part ticket. So there's a little booth, uh, sorry, I use my hands a lot. Little booth outside the fast part, um, outside the ride, sorry. Only certain rides have them because it's, I think there's only about eight rides that have a fast pass. So they're outside and it will tell you above it what time it is for that return. So you know if, if you've got a reservation at say three o'clock and that fast pass is between half two and three, you know you can do that one before your reservation you can get in at half two but if it was like three till half three you know right I'm gonna be eating at that time so like you can pick and choose like the ones you want to do you can only have one fast pass at a time but if you got your fast pass so the fast pass booths don't open till 10 so if you got your fast pass at 10 o'clock and it was for half 10 then that's fine because you go back at half 10 use it straight away sort it but you can get another fast if you were if your fast pass was saved for Buzz, but you'd gone over to Peter Pan to write um, to get on that. So you'd on Peter Pan, but then it's turned half it's turned half ten, nearly quarter um, to eleven, because you get half an hour for your slot, and the fast pass for Peter Pan is after that. So you might decide, oh look, I'll get, I can get another fast pass now because it's gone past half ten. So as soon as whichever one comes first so if it's the time of your um fast pass or two hours after you got your fast pass so if i got it at 10 and then i wanted to get another one but it wasn't till one o'clock i could get another one at 12 o'clock okay does that make sense so either whatever comes first so my fast pass ticket be so i can use it so my half 10 fast pass or if I've waited two hours so at 12 o'clock if I was getting one at 10 12 o'clock I could get another one if that makes sense so you can't have two running effectively at the same time but if it's two hours so if you've got one in the morning which isn't till like four o'clock in the afternoon you can get one at 12 o'clock so I hope that makes sense to people if not write in the comments down below and I'll try and explain it a bit better um, I know Disney life has a video on their Disneyland Paris thing which has really good easy way to tell you how to use fast passes. So they also have introduced a brand new fast pass system which is a paid for one. And there are four different types. Sounds a bit daunting but there's um two which gets you um free rides on different on three different no sorry one ride on three different attractions so there's a family one which i believe includes buzz peter pan and ratatouille potentially because there's it covers both studios and the main park so that that's the family like fun fast pass so it gives you one ride on each on those three so it gives you three fast passes and i'm unsure on the price on that one and um, there's the other one with the three is hyperspace mountain big thunder mountain and it used to be rock and roller coaster on that one but i think it might have changed to maybe tower of terror or maybe indiana jones i'm does indian yeah or indiana jones i can't remember exactly but that one's like the same i think that one's a little bit more expensive than the one for like the family fun one then the other two are like um unlimited or ultimate fast passes as i think they call them so there's one where you can get one ride on all of the fast pass rides so there was eight i think because now rock and roller coasters shut there's now seven but yeah so it gives you one ride on all of them and it doesn't there's no time on that so you for that whole day you can ride all of those rides whenever you want so does that make that i hope that makes sense as well then the next one is the ultimate fast pass so that gives you unlimited rides on all of the fast pass rides 
So you can ride Buzz Lightyear to your heart's content. You can get that top score, okay? Because you can keep going on. You got you get a wristband and you get like this little car, like like a park park ticket to verify the date of what when your wristband's valid. You show them to the person at the fast pass booth. Yep, sorted. You go on as many times as you want. Okay, you can come off the ride and go back round. Okay, I did that when I went for Big Thunder Mountain. I think I rode Big Thunder Mountain eight times in a row. Um, but yeah, so I got an, I did it and for one day and I got all of the fast pass rides done in, yeah, I went on all of them at least once, if not twice, if not three times probably. But yeah, so I went on them quite a few times. So they are a good thing, but they are kind of pricey if you are a bigger group. If it's just like, if it's two of you, maybe it is worth it. Um, I went as solo, so it is, that was definitely worth it for me because I went in February half term and it was very busy. So it was worth it for me, um, even though the, far, the single rider queues, which I'll get onto in a minute, were quite long. So the legion on from that, single rider. So single rider is where you can go on as a single rider. So if Ratatouille have it, um, RC Racer has it, Hyperspace Mountain, um, I'm just trying to think, it's mainly like the bigger ones. I think that's it. Parachute drop in the studios. Um, Crusher's Coaster. Those kind of like top rides don't necessarily have a fast pass um, for them. But Ratatouille is one where the, fu the single rider queue goes really quickly. Because in your little rat, what you sit in, they're two rows and they're both for free. So that's six. But most people will either be going as twos or fours. So if they're going as a two, there's one extra seat. If they're going as a four, there's two extra seats, but then they might find someone in the queue who is a pair. So potentially just like ask if they're happy to sit in two separate rows or something. If not, they will put two people or one person from a single rider queue. So the single rider queue for Ratatouille works like a dream. Single rider for RC Racer takes a very long time because I believe they're in rows of four. So, most people, like I said, most people go in twos or fours. So, that one takes a little bit longer. Crusher's Coaster takes a bit longer because there's only four people you can go in the cart. So you're sitting there waiting, you're sta sitting there, so they give you seats, no, standing there waiting for three people to get on the ride. You're like, come on, be a group of three or be a group of six. Be a group of six and you wanna go in two threes, like, come on. But yeah, that one takes a little bit longer as well. Hyperspace Mountain, kind of the same because it goes in that you're sitting in like twos but yeah it just some of them work and um, parachute drop you sit in fours as well so that one tends to take a little bit longer but yeah like I said you want those you want those odd numbers in groups okay you want a group of five yeah or like a group of like you can have a group of six sitting in two fours yeah stuff like that so that is a re another good way to save time when in the park. Uh, the next thing what I noticed was, um, what I didn't really use when I've been before, was Liberty and Discovery Arcade. So as you're looking down at the gorgeous castle from the train station, if you look to the left, there's normally a meet and greet. If you look to the right, there's normally a meet and greet on like, the other side. There are two arcades, I'm not sure which one's which, but it's Discovery and Liberty Arcade is what they're called, but I don't know which side which. And you can walk down them and it gives literally, it's like just a covered walkway really. And there's doors so you can go into the shops that are down on Main Street and not be like congested and stuff. So if you've got like a wheelchair or a push chair with you, it might some be easier for you guys to walk down there. Um, Cause then you don't get stuck on like the cobbles. Um, but also it gives you those access into the shops as well so it's quite a good way to get down the arcade and there's also toilets down the one on the left but like I said I can't remember what they are and it has a water fountain outside and um, then next one and um, talk about say secret but like passageways there is if you go down Main Street head towards the castle Turn left just after Casey's corner, there's like a turn in. There's like a cast member door, like here. But then there's like a passageway 
and not many people think that you can go down there because they think oh it's the, that's where the cast members go that's where um the characters go on their break because they like see them from the meet there and go on their break you can walk down if you go right it takes you um out into Frontierland, right near uh phantom manor so you can go like through that and it's a quick way to get round to phantom manor without having to go through the queues and the hustle and bustle of everyone so good way to um get there as well uh the next one is cinderella's carriage so you see all these people taking photos in front of cinderella's carriage and you go where's that i've never seen that before it's a bit like the dragon under the castle everyone's like where's the dragon no, i didn't know there was a dragon um but yeah so cinderella's carriage is in the courtyard garden kind of area of um a burge um like the restaurant where the princess dining is so it's a burge de cinderella i think uh, my french is terrible so don't take my word for it but it's in there um in the courtyard so you, you go through the castle you turn you go like, pretty much immediately right and there's you'll see a burge like where it's all the princess dining is and if you go, don't go into the door which is there go through like a little courtyard bit there's like te little patio tables and chairs out walk through into that bit which you're allowed to do there's cinderella's carriage sitting right in front of you because obviously that's her restaurant like that's where she is so that's where her carriage is so that's a really nice place to take photos there's also a wishing well sitting there which has got um cinderella -y related uh things on it so that's really nice you might want to take photos there lead along from there if you stay in that courtyard bit and you go towards the wishing well and go a slight right you'll see like a gate and i believe it's it's a gold gate and it's got a pumpkin on it because obviously cinderella and um, if you like wait or like go through to like that bit you'll get to and um, you'll see like people you'll see the castle stage which is like down there you can see like the show going on like obviously from behind um, I know they've just released that the Princess Waltz is going to be back on when I go in December so I can like stand up in this bit and the princess has come from like a door here walked round and then down onto like towards the back of the stage so sometimes the characters will stop and um, there's a villain show on at the moment because it's Halloween uh, sometimes they stop or like normally they'll just they'll wave and say hello and stuff on their way to the show they're don't, they don't stop because obviously they need to get to the show but um they'll like normally just let like, their stand there and wave and say hello and stuff but um sometimes if you're like one of the only people there they will come when they come back up they might stop and say hello they might say oh do you want to take a quick photo so kindly be ready if you want a quick photo or quick autograph have your autograph book ready have your camera ready like even if you just take a selfie with them like that's still your that's all the all the princesses for the princess world that's all the villains for the villain show what's for halloween at the moment okay there's other shows what go on on that stage um as well so it's really like a really good way to be like a, a meter away from the characters but yeah so it's another good place to stand if there are shows on the castle stage um the next one i would say there's quite a lot on my list so I think this is like a very good this is like one of my top tips top top tips so there is a company or a person I don't really know because they're kind of a bit secret um who is on Twitter on Instagram or Facebook called ed92 so they um post when there's rare character meets out or if there's a spot character meet somewhere so often um, by the old water mill or the windmill um it's like to the right of um at curious labyrinth and before you go down to casey jr like round there sometimes villager bell is out say in her blue dress um like posts on there if someone's out um stitch is sometimes out in discovery land by videopolis theater um they've had um, in Frontierland, Naveen and Princess Tiana have been out. So, like things like that, they like put things if like spot meets are up or if something exciting is happening or and stuff like that. So, it's a really good person to follow, turn your notifications on because 
uh, like on Twitter and on Instagram and stuff, so you know when you're in the park, especially. Oh look, that's that's on now. Let's go. Okay, stuff like that. So that's a really good person to follow. Um, another one is to p just saying about like obviously it's Halloween um, season there at the moment, and um, to plan your season. So if you want to go for Halloween. Um, Halloween starts at the start of October and finishes on I believe it's the 3rd of November um, this year so it goes through like that kind of time so if you want to go for Halloween where you can see all the villains it's got all the Halloween decorations out and stuff go within October pretty much if you want to go for Christmas the Christmas celebrations start the night for November this year and finish I think it's the 6th of January so you can go for that Christmas period, which I'm doing um, in December. Um, they've also, I know they've got its frozen season in the main park from the 11th of January till I think it's May sometime. So there's it's frozen season, so they'll have frozen shows on and things like that. And uh, hopefully frozen like character meets and stuff. But yeah. Marvel Summer of Superheroes, I think they're bringing the Lion King one back, yeah, all sorts of things like that, so have a look, they have the diary up, it's like a picture and it te a timeline and it tells you like the rough dates of when it is, so Summer of Superheroes, I haven't announced a first date, like end and um, start date yet, but it tells you, it says summer, so you know if you want to go for the Marvel su Superhero, you're going to go in summer, yeah, things like that. Uh, what else can we say? Oh, this is one of my favourite ones. And I just got mine today. So, Disney bounding. So, bounding is what um, adults or older children do when... Because you can't dress up in the park. If you're over 12, you cannot dress up as a character in the park. So, to get around this, um, I think it started in America. People were Disney bounding. So... That means dressing like the character but you're in everyday clothes so I've just um, got myself a yellow um, kind of like skater dress um, for um, my trip in December I know it's gonna be really cold and I've gone and got a red um, rose like um, brooch hair clip thing and stuff and I know how I'm gonna do my hair because I'm gonna do a decent bout for Belle so her like get her like do the bun on the top and then like the rest of it flowing down and then I've got like my dress and then I'm going to put my roses going on the side of my dress but yeah so I'm going to be bounding as Belle so obviously it is quite obvious that that is going to be Belle because you see a yellow dress like oh that's Belle but like I've seen people um, just get a red and white like polka dot skirt with a black top and then when they're more their mini ears that's mini bound people have done like blue top yellow skirt um, for snow white like things like that there's so many on Pinterest there's so many on Google I'm sure if you look through Facebook and Instagram if you typed it on Instagram Disney bounding you would find some okay it's a very popular in America but it's also becoming very popular in Paris. So um, I've also got a dress from Princess Rags, um, like fashion, and that's like a blue prince, pr princessy dress, but it's like not a Disney Disney dress. But so I'm going to be wearing that as well. So it's all things like that you can do to bound and be like a character when you're not actually a character. Uh, there, there's only a few left on the list. So the next one I would say is if you have a disability, either that be a physical disability, a mental disability, that you're pregnant, you have um, issues um, walking or standing, then you need to go to City Hall with a doctor's note or if you qualify for a blue badge, your blue badge or your pregnancy notes to say what your, to state your disability. If you have a blue badge that's fine you can just take your blue badge you don't need any other things to say but right, I've got a blue badge you don't need to say why or that obviously they'll ask you why but you don't need a doctor's note to say why uh, pregnancy notes the same you don't need they can obviously they well hopefully might be able to see that you're pregnant but it tells them exactly why if you haven't got if your child or you yourself doesn't have one of these 
uh, things, then you need to go to your doctor and get a doctor's note signed within three months of your visit. So I'm going in December, so obviously if I qualified for one, I could get one now, because it would be dated now, for my and it would cover my December trip. Okay, so this is a disability or an easy access pass. So if you've got a, group, um, a blue badge, or you have a permanent disability, so either that be autism or you're deaf or you're blind, things like that, you will qualify for a green pass. So that is a, it's like a priority pass kind of thing. So it's for um, for those kind of things like I just said. So um, it gives you um, like access into disabled queue for the rides and that will that take you kind of straight in if you know what I mean but obviously like you just have to you have to queue in the disabled line but for most rides it's very very short queues in five minutes but that's mainly just waiting because they're just checking your pass to make sure how many guests you've got with you and what your disability is and um, for um, meet and greets you can use it as well but for meet and greets you do get a return time to come back which is obviously fine but they only have a certain amount of slots they can give out in a day so you can't get these slots within extra magic time like time or hours you have to do it from 10 o'clock so they work like a fast pass um so you go to there's like a disabled entrance at like the exit and you like wait there and then you show the car cast member your um pass and then they'll give you like a little sheet of paper to say oh can you come back at this time so that gives you a chance you, you can just go off and like sit down and have a coffee or, or something or if it's not very long you could just stand there and wait and then you'll get like seen into the meet and greet from that entrance and pretty much you might have to wait just after one family like when you go back they might just say oh can you just wait and um we'll just do this other family and then we'll then we'll bring you in kind of thing so stuff like that so it's very easy and um, you also get a dead does it dead, uh, can't say it now designated spot for the parade and illuminations but for these you can only take um two people in with you so if you're um so you, you get up to four uh, with you on rides and for meet and greets um but you can only take two people into the parade and illuminations and um, like disability area just because they're so much smaller and there's all the people in the park who've got this pass who obviously will want to use them as well so they have to restrict it um but yeah so it's not too much of a big deal sometimes if you're going for illuminations and say your child's in a wheelchair and then like you're it's just you're a couple and then your child so that's three of you anyway you'd all be able to get in but if then you had um the additional people there is space around the outside of the disability area so you could park right in front of the um, disability bit for your illuminations and then like the rest of your party can just be sitting in front of you kind of thing or like just to the side of you so you're not really split up from them but obviously like the one the person who is disabled might have that little bit extra space around them rather than um being within the crowd but obviously you don't have to use them for those kind of for those of things because you can still get a good view at illuminations you can still get a good view in the parade um just you just need to get there early for the orange pass which is the easy access pass and um, that is the one that you'd get if you're pregnant if you had like difficulty like walking or like standing mainly so if um you're maybe being tested for some um like issues or some some form of disability but it hasn't been said that it's permanent then you might be issued the orange pass but it just depends on the cast member who does it but definitely if you're pregnant you will get the easy access pass so that means that you get return times for meet and greets um rides and then you can't use the um designated area for illuminations and parade so you would have to find somewhere to sit but it just means you are pretty much given if you go for a ride and the ride's time says that it's 30 minutes you're pretty much given a time to come back in half an hour um so you are effectively queuing but you're using a virtual queue because so you don't have to stand there you can go sit down uh, for half an hour and then come back but for that you can only have one at a time so if you've got a time for big fund mountain you can't 
in the meantime get another time to go to see Mickey Mouse you have to only have one at a time but obviously if some people um, when I went a few years ago my cousin got one of them um, due to treatment she was going through um, we uh, managed she was like I don't mind waiting up to like 20 minutes like like she wasn't too bad but if she stood any longer than 20 minutes then like she was in pain so it'd be like think so things like that so we did get on rides we used a fast pass system and obviously with that easy access pass you can still do that uh the next one i would say is pin trading so pin trading isn't as big in paris as it is in america but you can still do it uh, cast members will have lanyards on and if they've got a pin on their lanyard they are able to trade it with you um so if it's on their on their clothing you are not able to trade it with you because that is like their personal collection um and they just want to like show like show you what they've got or it might be a cast member exclusive one and obviously they don't want to get rid of it um but yeah if it's on their lanyard you can trade it with them there is a pin trading um like heart or booth I think they call it um, in Frontierland near Cowboy Cookout and Pocahontas's India Village which is like the play area for children um, and they have like a pin board like they do in America and you can go and trade pins in there on like off your lanyard or off you into the onto the board so yeah that's fine as well uh, next one I'm gonna say they kind of link together this too but uh, meal plans so quite a lot of the time Disney have offers going on that you get a free health or meal plan or if you want to buy a meal plan I would say it is it depends how long you're going for because it is recommended but I'd always try and have a breakfast meal plan especially because then it sets you up for the day so when I went solo I stayed at the B&B so the partner hotel you got breakfast included in that so that was good because it was like a buffet breakfast you stocked up on breakfast then you had the whole day in the park because I went solo I I took some snacks and stuff with me so I had like some crisps and stuff in my bag um but I wasn't fussed about eating until maybe four o'clock so I'd have breakfast at seven and then I wouldn't eat again like a big meal until about four so and then sometimes I might have had something after illuminations but it might have just been like a cake or something like that but I wasn't hungry but obviously if you're traveling with small children they will want to eat so it's up to you guys but I would say definitely get a breakfast meal plan if you can or if the half or meal plan offer is on then I'd recommend getting that so half or meal plan gives you your breakfast and then one other meal in a day so either lunch or dinner depending on the hotel you stay at, it's a different uh, like price range oh, sorry I've got really soft right So if you're staying at Santa Fe or Cheyenne, or Cheyenne, however you say it, I can't remember, Cheyenne, 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 um, it is the standard meal plan. If you're staying at Sequoia Lodge, Newport Bay, or um, the Marvel One Hotel New York, um, obviously it's still being redone, then you'll get the plus, and then if you stay at the main hotel, it's premium. So standard covers all of the buffet restaurants, um, so that's Plaza Gardens is included. Um, uh, what else? I never remember the name of it. It's in it's in Adventureland, and it's like a I want to I want to say Mediterranean, but it's not. Oh, what's it called? It's like Aladdin, like style. Ar Ar Arabag Ar Arabag. I think that I can't remember how you say it, but. There's one in Adventureland as well, um, Restaurant de Stars in the studios, and there's a couple more, I can't remember. The ones all in in the hotels, not the main hotel though, all covered a standard one. But you can do a top up price if you want to go to the character dining plan and character meet, meals and stuff like that as well. And you can top up on any of the meals anyway. Uh, plus you get um, sit down service, um, like table service, sorry, in the... Uh, in the park they normally have like it's normally a set menu but there's normally like three things in like starters three things in mains three things in desserts that you can pick from so it's not too bad so that covers things like Shay Remy, Captain Jack's um 
I'm just trying to think of some now, like just going around the park. Waltz, if it's open, which has been shut a lot recently. Um, like places like that. A couple of places in the, uh, where is it? In the village have it as well. Uh, but obviously you can top up again if you want to go to the character meals. And then the premium plan, you get all of your character meals included in that, but you can go to any restaurant you want. So you, for the, if you're in the main hotel on the premium plan, you get your uh, character meals, so princess dining included, character breakfast you can have included, inventions, lunch you can get included. You, If you want to go for the Sunday brunch, um, that is, you do have to pay a top up price on that one because obviously it's a bit more and you get more characters and it's normally a themed one. Uh, and there's a meal in Cafe Mickey as well. So, but you, there's like a premium, they're on most menus, so like Chez Remy, there's a plus um, set menu and there's a premium set menu. So obviously, if you're on the premium plan, you can pick the, from the premium one. And I think in Chez Remy, it's like steaks on the premium one, whereas it's only chicken on the plus one. But if you like the sound of the plus one, you can still have that because, and you don't have to pay anything because you've got a higher meal plan. Uh, then next one about meal plan, I just said about the character um, meets at inventions so inventions is the um, character meal in the main Disneyland Hotel it is a lovely place to meet it's a buffet it's so easy the children love it there's so many different food varieties they have like a salad bit they have like a fish bit they have like meats and um, kind of kiddie friendly stuff like loads of desserts and puddings uh, bread all things like that so I know people are going to ask about like kids things they had pasta but then they had sauce in a separate bowl so it was then they had meatballs in a separate thing like everything separate for like kids wise so if your child is a fussy eater and only likes plain pasta there is plain pasta there are chicken nuggets there are some chips okay there's those kind of things what your children you know Ch your children are gonna go I don't want that it's got sauce in it or that sauce is touching the pasta there's always children like it okay but there's loads of like stuff what children can eat especially in inventions which is separate um, meals so they kind of build their own um, but yeah let me have a look down my list I think we've said everything so they are my top tips for Disneyland Paris. Obviously, uh, I will be vlogging when I go in December, so I'm going on Sarah Louise Porter's um, Disneyland Paris trip, and then I go again in March for my own trip. But yeah, so I'm really excited. Stay tuned for more Disney content. I'm going to be doing a video about what bounds I'm going to be wearing and what. Uh, things I'm packing and what's where I got my suitcase and all those kind of things as well so keep and um, stay tuned for all of those different things on my channel see you later bye